In this video, I'm going to go a little more in-depth into multi-view block references. I've mentioned them in a few other videos, but I haven't really explained too much about how they work. They're important parts of AutoCAD architecture for a couple of reasons. One is because they're used for tagging, room tags and door tags and things like that. And the other reason is because they're used for kind of AEC blocks or smart blocks that have multiple views built into them. So they can look one way in plan, but look a different way in 3D or section views or elevation views. I'm going to start with kind of editing a room tag so that you have a little more flexibility in what you can do with it. Um, for example, controlling the size of the text, um, allowing it to work on multiple lines of text and things like that. So I have this little space that I drew. I threw a tag in and a space so that I could go through the exercise here of editing the tag. It's very common that a tag won't fit into a smaller room. So I just kind of made up this example to uh, show you how you can fix that. So first, you have to keep in mind a few things. This is a multi-view block reference. You can always tell because of the ribbon changes to show your tag options. You can also tell in the properties palette because it says multi-view block reference there as well. If you edit the style of the tag, you will see that there's a view block there, AEC8 room tag basic P. That is the uh, kind of the core generic block that is used for when you're seeing it in top view or plan view. And you know that that's the block being used for top view because it has the top check there in the view directions on the right. I'll get into this screen a little bit more when I do the uh, other example, which is a toilet. The other way you can tell which block is kind of um, being used is if you copy it and explode it. You can always then go to the properties palette and the first time you explode it, it's going to have a generic code assigned like a number letter. And then if you explode it again, then it gets the reverts back to the original block. There's just a normal block that's built into the multi view block. And uh, that's what we're going to actually edit in order to control the size of the attribute text. Now I'm going to undo. Um, so you can use that to see uh, what the blocks name is and how that block is kind of built on the inside. For example, the attributes down at the bottom are actually regular attributes that are being used for property set data. And that's set up by having the tag of the attribute um, define the property set by what's before the colon being the property set definition. And then what's after the colon is the individual line of data that would be assigned. So if you wanted to make your own tag, you could look at your property set definitions in the style manager. And then the category of property set definition, see there is space object. So that's what would go before the colon in your attribute. And then the row of data here is what would go after the colon. So then when you have your attribute selected and you're modifying it, then you just assign that in the properties palette or in the attribute editor before you make your block. Now I'm going to undo the fact that I exploded this for now because I want to change the annotation scale of it first. So I'm going to add delete scales and make it a one to one scale so that when I edit the size of the attribute text, I'll actually know what size I really need to assign. So I'm adding uh, one foot to one foot scale and then I can remove eighth inch per foot so that it's going to get a lot smaller. So now it's teeny tiny. But this is like the actual original size of the block before it's scaled up based upon the annotation scale that's been attached to the, the tag as it's brought in. So now I can explode it one time again and then a second time so that it's back to the original block, AC8 room tag. And then I'm going to do edit block in place and hit OK. And there's the actual attributes inside the block. You can see in white now. So now if I look at the size of the text, this is an easy way for me to change it. So rather than eight, it's a little larger than it really needs to be. A normal note or text size in an architectural plan is 330 seconds. So I'm going to make this 330 seconds instead of eight for the attribute size. And now I'm going to look at the attribute settings here for the other attribute as well. See, it's got 330 seconds for this size already, 
but I don't really like the justification being fit. I'd rather it was consistent. So I'm going to choose middle center for the justification. And now I need to recenter it in the rectangle. So I'm going to find the center and then take that grip and put it there on the center and then delete my line. So I use the line just to have a midpoint for the center of that rectangle. Okay, so now um, that will not get wider or narrower because I don't really like that aspect of the tags. You know, it's just going to stay consistent in terms of the justification. You could probably make the rectangle a little smaller if you don't have really long room tags, but I won't worry about that at this point. Now these don't look like they're the same width factor, so let me check that. See, this one is uh, standard style and 0.75 width factor. And this one is standard style but 1.0 width factor, so I'm going to change that so that it's consistent to 0.75. So that's going to look a little better because it's going to be consistent on the width now. All right, so now I can uh, leave the block editing mode, so I'll hit Save Changes up at the top, and then hit OK on saving my changes. So that looks a little better. And by editing that original block, remember the AEC8 room tag basic P? Now, if I reinsert a room tag here, I'm going to um, actually copy this one over to the side so we can compare. So now I'll bring a new one in by retagging the space. You can see how that's quite a bit smaller in terms of the text size compared to the old one, but it's still a normal um, text height for technical drawings by being 330 seconds. Now, the other thing that I meant to do was to control the multiple lines field of the attribute. So I'm going to go back and, and check that on this one. I forgot to look at that. So I'm going to go back to edit mode, edit block in place, and select that attribute. You can see that it has the option for multiple lines in the ribbon, and it does say yes, but how do I make it actually work? The uh, easiest way to do that is to control the boundary width, because that's basically the width of the attributes text box. So I'm going to set this, it's a little bit of trial and error, I'm going to set it to uh, 2 inches. And then now if I double click on that attribute and then hit the three dots to open the editor, you actually get the ruler to where you can fine tune it. So I'm going to now make that maybe more like there for the width. So the ruler is going to always control the width just like it does for multi-line text. I probably could have just double clicked on that initially and not changed the size here. But you do have the option to do it either in the properties palette or by pulling out the ruler. So now let me hit OK and then hit OK on the attribute there. And now save my changes again. So now I'm going to re tag this space again. And now you can see how it's gone to two lines rather than just one long horizontal line. So you may not still be able to fit every tag into every space. You don't want to crunch it down so narrow that it starts to look weird. But for a very small space, uh, like a little pantry or something, then you normally tag it off to the side and then include a leader that points back into the room. So by doing this and giving yourself kind of a, a medium size width, you know, like we did on the in the block editor then it will work for kind of the smaller rooms um, but not the tiny tiny rooms probably then you'll end up still using a leader so that's one way that you can kind of edit the tags to work for you and this is just yet one more example of why having a template is so nice is because then once you get those tags set up the way you want you can have them saved in your template file the blocks with the proper attribute settings and then every time you tag a project, you won't have to do those changes. It'll already be done for you. Now, the other thing I was going to show you with the multi-view block references is kind of the idea of um, furniture and fixtures and things like that and why multi-view block references are important. If you have a plan, you want your toilet to look very easy to read, like this. But if you go to a 3D view, you want your toilet to be 3D. 
because then if you're doing um, perspectives, not that you do a perspective of the bathroom, I hope not, but uh, that's just one example. If you do sections and elevations, you also want the toilet to show up in the proper view. So that's the idea of multi-view block reference is that it has different blocks that work with different views. So if we look at this particular block and I go to edit style in the ribbon, there's actually five different blocks that are created, um, that are kind of assembled together to create this one multi-view block definition. And that's why it's called the multi-view block is there's multiple views. So the P block is for plan. So you can see how that's going to work in top or bottom views. And then if I go down to the F block, that's going to work for front or back views. And then you have left, you have right, and you have a model view, which will work for any others. So each of these is going to work for the view that you would see it in. So if you do a section and you're seeing it from the front or the left side, then you get that block in the view that you want. So then the model one covers anything else. So if you do an isometric view like I'm in now, then that's the one that you see is that real 3D version. Basically the way that this is set up is, uh, let me turn a layer on here, is somebody actually draws the different blocks. So you could create your own multi, your own multi view block references this way. You start by drawing the different blocks of what you want it to look like. So you draw a plan view, you make it into a block. You draw the side view, you make that into a block. The front view, the back view, and the 3D view. Obviously that's the hard one. And then you make each of those a block and, and then you follow proper naming protocol so that you can figure out which one's which when you're setting up the multi-view block settings. The, one of the really important things with this is that you have your base points set to the exact same point in every view. So that that way, um, all those blocks are going to show in the proper location when you are switching back and forth between different views. So you can see how all these blocks has the base point in the exact same location in the toilet relative to one another. So that's a very important aspect of this. So if you want to then create your own, you could uh, go back to your style manager. And there's your multi-view block definition. So this is where you would go and set up, um, you could copy the one that's here and modify it, which view applies and which block applies and which display representations apply. So you hit add if you want to include more blocks. The general one is your normal one where you set up um, the front view, left, right model, plan, and then you kind of follow that same protocol. Plan view is top and bottom. Uh, front and back is the F view, L view is left, right view is right, and then model view is other. Under model, you have the model view and then you check all the boxes because when you're in a model display representation, you're in a three-dimensional view. So then you always want it to make sure that you show uh, no matter what direction you're actually looking at the project. These other ones aren't used for this particular block. Uh, they could be. It depends on what you're doing. Um, but that's the basics of how you could do this.